I'm going to demonstrate and talk to the patient about what's going on and why we would need to irrigate. Good morning, sir. My name is Nancy Huff. I'll be the nurse taking care of you today. Could you state your name and date of birth? All right, sir. I see that that's your name and date of birth from your ID band. All right. Are you allergic to any medications? I'm not be giving you any medications right now, but are you allergic to any? Or any type of um, chemicals, uh, soaps, any type of tape issues, anything that your skin has difficulty or reacts to? No? All right. Thank you for that. All right. How are you feeling today? Kind of crampy? Well, let's see what's going on here. So I hand hygiene. All right, I'm going to assess, sir, your bladder and see what's going on. You say it feels a little crampy, like you need to pee, but you, you can't. All right, I'm going to check and make sure that your tube hasn't kinked off. I'll also make sure that it is draining properly, that we've had output since the bag was last emptied, and also then to make sure that your irrigation. Well, your irrigation is running in, but I'm going to go ahead and stop that when I'm, while I'm evaluating all of this. I'm going to assess your bladder. All right. And yeah, I can see that your, your bladder is distended. You've got a little bit of a, of a bulge right here above your suprapubic bone, and that's where it's tender as well and cramping. All right. It does sort of look like that you are um, retaining some fluid that maybe your bladder is not draining properly. Um, so I'm going to check and make sure that there's no kinks in the tubing and everything is flowing, has been flowing correctly. Uh, I think what we need to do is consider irrigating your bladder because I think that you may have still got some clots that have caused your bladder not to be emptying well. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up now. All right. You may remember that uh, with our CVI infusing, we would need to check our volume that's been infused. This is a three liter bag, and with the three liter bag, we have infused about 1,500 mils. As you may recall, with our urine, we had back about 350 mils. So I know that, that I have not gotten all my volume back because my intake is greater than on my output. And that also goes along with the fact that the patient is distended and very uncomfortable. So the first thing we do would be stop our CPI. I'm going to perform hand hygiene. I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves. Now, remind you, these are clean gloves, not sterile. Although the, the irrigation part we keep sterile, this is not done with sterile gloves. I'm going, after I put on the gloves, I'll open my kit, pour, I'm pour my saline. Open my kit. Again, remember that I'm wanting to get my container out. I'm going to set it down. I'm going to go ahead and pour my saline. So chloride. I'm using sodium chloride, not sterile water in this particular case. Sometimes the providers may order or use sterile water, but in our case we're using saline. I'm going to take my syringe out of its holder. Pouring about two to three hundred mils here. I need about 60 mils per irrigation. Sodium chloride. In this case, my cap came on my syringe, and so I could just take it and hold it in my fingers. Other times, it might be loose in your kit, and you'd need to retrieve it uh, from there. I'm going to put my syringe in, and I'm going to pour up my first set of fluid. Remember, currently, it's sterile to sterile with my container, my syringe, and my water. I meant my sterile saline. I have a sterile drape inside. I'm going to try to remove it by grabbing an end. Again, putting shiny side down. Now, when I move my, my catheter or manipulate my catheter, this is not sterile. Um, so when it comes across my field, that will no longer be a sterile field either. But I do maintain a sterile field in this area. Um, so I'm going to now clean my junction.
this particular tubing is the one I'm going to disconnect. The part that is on the foley, that's the part that's draining into the drainage collection bag, is the part I want to separate. So this is the part I'm going to clean. You also have the irrigation line that's coming in from the tubing. You also have the port for your foley balloon. Those I am not going to be using, so I'm going to get those out of my way. You can clean those if you want, and uh, I pull them out and just pull them out of my way and hold them out of my way. I'm also going to clean further down to reduce the colony count. Now, to do this, I'm going to pinch my tubing here, working it off. Do it away from you so that there's splash, it goes into the container, not onto you. All right. I'm going to see if my cap will fit. In this case, I can tell my cap is not a good fit, so I'm going to move it around here to hold it out of my way. I'm ready now to irrigate. I'm going to pull this just a little further over. I'm going to put my thumb in, put my fingers on the flanges to control it. I got 60 mils of saline. I'm going to connect it. Holding this securely at the junction so that they don't spill out, I'm going to irrigate, so you're getting my bladder. You may or may not meet resistance. There's a little bit of irrigating. You may have to work it just a little bit, but you should not have to push hard against the bladder. So I've gotten all of it in for my demo purposes. I'm going to need to turn my bladder over. Thank you. All right, I'm going to irrigate back. I had 60 in, and in this case I can aspirate back 60. I'm going to pinch my tip again, pushing away from me in case it drops or splatters. If I had a st another receptacle, I could put it in here. I could use my container in front of me, although if I do that, it's no longer sterile. And I'm hoping that I might be able at some point to see it like that if I have urine coming back. So I'm probably going to want to keep that sterile if I can. I'm going to irrigate again. Now, because I've touched my syringe, only my tip can go into the saline. That's why you feel your saline at least cover more than what you anticipate. Now, I'm only able there to get back about 45 mils that time when I pulled up, when I pulled up my ear again. So I'm only putting in 45 this time. First time I got back my entire volume. May or may not get it all back. Again, if there's trouble with the irrigating properly, you may not. It looks like I'm getting all of mine back again. I could also check to see if I've got free flow of urine again. And I could irrigate that again if I needed to, or I could go ahead and connect it and see if my bowl is working properly. I'm going to take my tip, line these two up, working them on so that it is secure. I'm going to set this down, take my dirty supplies out of the way. I'm going to evaluate whether or not I've got urine coming back. And we do, we're beginning to get urine return. All right. It looks like it's working well. Obviously, I'll return to uh, reassess my patient. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes to see if the distension has gone down, if the cramping is subsiding, uh, and to make sure that I'm getting back my flow. I still need to get back um, almost 1,200 uh, mils of fluid, so I, I'm in a deficit right now, so I want to continue to monitor that I do get back the urine output that I need. Anytime a patient has a Foley in and there's been no urine output in two hours, that's a sign that is important to notify the provider that the patient is, had no urine output in two hours. Once I've cleaned up all of my supplies, my used products, and tossed those, 
Then I would go ahead and remove my gloves, do hand hygiene, and then before I leave, remember you need to open the CBI so that it's running again. Um, depending on your protocol or your orders, uh, if not, the, a common accepted flow is about a drop a second, which would be 60 drops a minute. So that would be like 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. So it's open to the patient. This one is open and draining. One bag is closed. 